Oh, you have to. Oh, just pull my back. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls his back. <laughs> just broke my spine. All right. Welcome to Shorty Sipica. When he jumps. That was just. Bang! We're on. Boy, I'd boy, where are we? <laughs> Holy crap. Let's get it. Wow! Let's get the crumbs out of me. Big fan, mate. Wow. Big that's, fan. um. That's almost as bad an idea as a shorty Patreon, but um... <laughs> Welcome to Shorty Supercoach, and it's Shorty and Langs talking about Supercoach again. How are you, mate? Wonderful, Daniel. Thank you for having me on for another opportunity. It's good to have you back. Yeah, it's yeah, been a while. Yeah, it's been like a whole year, so... Mm, yeah. Yeah. I thought we could talk a little bit about our sides. People yeah. know my side, obviously, but I thought... I hope so, yeah. We can quickly run through your team, and then I thought it'd be good to discuss just a few of the differences, mainly of the premium variety, because rookies don't really matter at the moment. No, it's, it's yeah, it's really hard to gauge the rookies, but obviously it's the... Uh, cup? <laughs> <laughs> the, Marsh, the Marsh series, series yeah. that's yeah. the one, comes along. then we'll <laughs> The Cup. Yeah, able to... Yeah, that's a different video yeah. altogether. <laughs> um, How many cups? <laughs> um, so, to start with, I know that you've got um, Rory Laird in the back line. I've gone Jake Lloyd, a player mm. that I didn't have last year and one that haunts your memories to this day. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've gone with Lloyd. I didn't have him last year and it, and it cost me a lot because I kept trying to get him in every week and I think one mm. week he scored like 170 or just went crazy and I just that was it. I couldn't get yeah. him. So yeah. he's in until I see something from Laird and maybe a revamped Adelaide game plan this year. I'm relying a bit more on Rory. He had a bit of an off year last year. I'll probably go mm. with him. And obviously the little man, little man representation here with Caleb yeah. Daniel <laughs> in the back line. So he was a, a revelation last year and no reason why I shouldn't put him in again. Helmet gang, hashtag helmet squad. Um, <laughs> and then your favourite, James Sasali. He's in a the, juicy in unit. In the back line. He's, He's a, a juicy, juicy unit. unit. Yeah, so. Loose unit, but. Yeah, potentially. Hopefully it just calms down. So um, all three of those players I expect to be in my team at the end of the season. So yeah. they're, they're your proven premium players that will just get me points every week. They're not in there for monetary purposes they're just there to get me points so 22 weeks i've got samuel doherty in there as well who you'd call a premium but obviously yeah. his price doesn't reflect that but he's still one that i'd like to see a bit out of in the uh marsh community mm. thing <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah we'll, we'll get back to um seeing some good form from him hopefully mm. hopefully his knees hold up so yeah um Let's discuss. Say, let's yeah. let's just park that there and let's discuss that back line because I thought it'd be good to talk yep. about our differences, not in life but our super coach sides. And there's just the one difference: Lloyd versus Laird. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, I guess clearly Lloyd will be a more popular pick. He's dominated, but yeah. um, I just think Laird I think let Laird's a lot of people lap down last year. Yeah. But I think Adelaide did as well. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. Especially Kane Corn. Yes. Um, but yeah, he, he was just, he never just, he never ticked over 100 enough. Mm. He would just be getting the 82. There's two. nothing that bad about his scores, but they were just a bit like vanilla. The, they were like yeah, they were 80s, extremely vanilla. mid to high 90s. <laughs> they were like Diet Coke. I mean, yeah, you yeah, expect yeah. just regular Coke yeah. from Rory. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, you ask for a burger with no tomato and it comes out with the tomato in it, Daniel. <laughs> and you're like, this isn't what I ordered. Or the beetroot. <laughs> yeah, or just, you know, eat meat. Stained beetroot meat. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll get you a new one, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah cool. well, that's that's sort of what Rory yeah, was yeah. last year. He was a burger with the tomato. Like, it's still there, but you, and you can take the tomato out, but it's still got that stain in it that you. And last year was a tomato stain of Rory's yeah. career. It I just think we start with a burger related analogy, but that's good. Yeah, it's 2020. Good. Things are improving. The content has to be crisper, sharper, and more just. You know, meme worthy for the audience. Yeah. So <laughs> Isaac Heaney meme worthy. <laughs> well, here's my pitch for Laird on yeah. the positive side. Yeah. You know, Crows, they're all over the joint last year, shocking. He managed to average reasonable in a terrible season. Yeah, uh, and, he, and, he and wasn't I think bad, he's yeah. a proven scorer as we know. There's a little bit of risk because, you know, he might not bounce back and obviously Lloyd is as reliable as they get, but and he's he's not locked by any means to my side. I mean, I'll be interested to see him through the practice games. But 
I do like there's a little bit of value because sometimes yeah. we can just get sworn off players real quick. You know, they have one average year and, you know, what the average, like 93 or something. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not a disaster, but, but, but it he's was, been 108. At yeah, time. well, that's that's it. And it wasn't, he wasn't just getting those big scores. No. Yeah, he's just, he's still and consistent, but. I looked at his numbers, oh my lord. <laughs> I looked at his numbers and he, reasonable, like mm. in terms of disposal, but. He needs like thirty five touches. Yeah, because he gets a lot of uncontested, yeah. dishes it around, and and Miller have burst onto the scene mm. as well. Like he took a lot of points off too. Yeah, um, yeah. That's and Steedman played some decent games until he and you got Smith took and his leg. so there's a few blokes floating yeah. around and uh, the Crows will be interesting. They'll they'll be very differently set up in certain stages of the ground. You know they want to do a bit of difference with their midfield. You know mm. you're not going to throw Law, um, Rory Laird in the middle, but some other blokes might, which affects him. So it will be interesting. And if I remember correctly, the back line last year was one of the hardest positions mm. to pick. Like people were ending up, I know I ended up with Basha Hawley, yeah. which no one thought was going to be a you know consistent option yeah. throughout the year. But it was just like we had a couple of players that had DPP the year before that then mm. went back. It was Williams and Whitfield. One was injured, one was yeah. injured, vice versa. So, yeah, it looks a bit more settled this year in the back line. And, yeah. I haven't thought too much about my back line, really. Like, yeah, I've like picked them and it, just it hasn't, in there, so. it really hasn't moved. It's um, such, it's like, you know, it's like the back line is like the base. Yeah. If, if, the, if the team was the nice. band, yeah. yeah, it would be like the base. Like, it's, it's there, it supports the team, but it, yeah. you know, no one cares for it. Um, the midfield's interesting between us. Sure so. is, yeah. There's mm. a big uh, point of difference here, mm. Daniel, Dan. Um, Jack McRae. A yeah. lot of your um, followers can't believe you don't have any bulldogs in your middle. No field. bulldogs through the middle. Jack McRae, another one that's haunting your memories and your dreams and your nightmares. Which um, will be a little sneaky vid. Coming yeah, that's, out uh, uh, that's coming up from Shorty Central <laughs> shortly. <laughs> Shorty um, yeah, McRae, I think you just got to get him in. Him and him and Neil were probably the most damaging and potentially potent midfield scoring options throughout the. Uh, the season last year, and they were probably the first couple you'd look at to chuck a, a big C on. Um, a big C. Big. So I know Lachlan scored some big points. Yeah. Um, and McRae scored some big points and was quite consistent too. So Yeah, he was. Um, got the usual Nat Fife in there, although I've sort of been flip-flopping between him and Cripps. I don't yeah. know why I haven't picked Cripps, probably because of my bias towards Patrick Dangerfield, who's in there also. But mm. I feel like Dangerfield, with losing that... DPP this year is still going to be just as good as ever, and he's not going to be picked as much if he's yeah, just yeah, midfield. Yeah. So, if he's a forward, he would have been eighty percent picked. But in the midfield, he's not going to um, be picked as much, and he's still going to just score one twenties every week. Mm. So every week, I oh, bloody hope so, mate. Nothing more saucy than Paddy bursting out of the middle. Mm. That gives me more than a big C. But um, <laughs> let's roll into my midfield, and that's where the difference is because. This is big. If you were comparing two teams, Shorty and Langston in the grand final, you'd go, it's going to be decided in the midfield. That's better. <laughs> because I've got five primos, mm -hmm. and we'll see where that sort of changes up in the other positions. But you pumped up Neil, you pumped up McRae, the usual five, he says. I've got none of them. Yeah, that's a big call, Daniel. Massive call. I have had Neil in my side. Five on the ground, though. Yeah, I did say I'm. I'm actually big on not starting five. Okay. Because... I don't know the exact stats, but I feel like he rarely plays every game. His body just concerns me. Oh, Has oh, there been some previous controversy, Ari, Shorty and Fife in the last couple of years? Did you not mm. start him or tell people not to start him one year? And no, not... He came out of the gates. Am I correct in saying that? Or Look, I'm not going to fully rule it out. I've made some big goals. <laughs> I did that with Ablett and I did that with Dangerfield. I know yeah, that much. You, you had a shock at one year that people were... <laughs> I went and picked Christian Salem. No, it wasn't that. You were like, nah, don't pick this player. He's not going to be any good. And he came out and he was like the highest scoring yeah. player in the first four or five yeah. rounds in history. Welcome something. to Shorty Supercoach. Pick yeah. Josh Caddy. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but you know, you're, you're not wrong. Fife's had injuries for sure. And Let me just whip up some stats. I'd turn around, but I've pulled my C2 and C3 vertebrae <laughs> turning around because your laptop's currently behind my back. So That might make a little blooper reel. Yeah. Um, Shut the loose. Oh my god, every time we record, there's a dog. There's a dog every time I record, every time I try to sleep. Yeah. It's like, 
Yeah. Yeah. She's constantly getting robbed. What about when we record all the jets are flying over for the air show? Every five minutes, she's like, BAM! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh. just while you look at um, for that, I'll go over my uh, um, couple of rookies in the, in yeah, the yeah, midfield. Yeah, exactly. So obviously, everyone's got Matt Rao. But one of the big ones that I reckon for yeah. Geelong that's going to just be good this year is Sam Simpson. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. won the uh, VFL Best and Fairest last year and played a couple of games very early in his career where he where he obviously shouldn't have because his body just wasn't ready. But he, he did well, like especially in that Richmond game. He was pretty lively in the, in the GWS debut where him and Buzzer and Guthrie all debuted at once. So, yeah, Simpson is... Uh, Pretty much based on price and yeah. watch over the preseason because he'll be one to look out for because there's not a heap of midfield rookies that are jumping out right now, obviously, without the Marsh community thing going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously, Marlon Pickett's in there as well yeah. after his grand final heroics. Daniel, your favourite player on your favourite team. Didn't say that guy. Sorry, get, mate. Just get gifted. Must have been busy. He's got gifted a grand final appearance. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, so what would you get with the Fife information? Yeah, uh, yeah, well, just look, uh, just a dog yelling for you. Know, <laughs> you know, I've sort of... been strolling for you this whole time. And it's it's 10, o- right. 10 o- 3, I don't know if you get your bed or anything. That's but that's right. Right. Just, uh, you, you remember when that guy barked like a dog on a car? <laughs> yeah, you're not going to play it, are you? I'm I can't going. because the laptop's <laughs> connected. But anyway, Fife, <laughs> going back from 2019 games played, 2015, 21, 5. 18, 18, 19, 9, 21, 16. So I rest my bloody case, mate. Are you no. telling me he missed one year and got five games and the rest he's played more than 15 games? 15 is not good enough, mate. I need 20 plus. And he's done 20 once, 21 twice. That's it. Yeah, okay. He's so played... he's done 23 times, is what you're saying. <laughs> Over an extenuous career. I don't know if extenuous is a word, but... Uh... <laughs> That sounded like something Sam Newman would make up. Yeah. The hand motion. Anyway, yeah, no, I see your point. And I will be keeping a close eye on Crypt Daddy. Because mm. he, he just yeah. is like fully, like you cannot have a player more in his prime right now than Patricio Cripatis. Yeah. <laughs> and look, if Fife averages 120 over 19 games, I think we're going to forgive him. But he's going to rack up a lot more total points than a lot of other Yeah, and but... it will be interesting to see how the new coach at Fremantle goes. Yeah. Uh, I've been yeah. keeping a... A saddle line, another Fremantle forward as well, who might come up handy in draft. But um, yeah, it's just interesting to see how they go. That's why I love, you know, if you want to go anywhere in Supercoach, you have to watch that pre-season comp. Mm. You've got to watch it. Yeah, yeah. You can't miss it. Or I have AFL a few X, fellas on the... <laughs> AFL X. Have a Super f- goal! <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> from <the internet. laughs> yeah. Everyone's just like, that's so relaxing. for <laughs> Um... Yeah, so yeah, my midfield. Now we've got Dangerfield, like-minded, but here's where Shorty goes a little bit different. It's not crazy point of difference, but it's not your run of the mill, as we said, McRae, Niels, Fife, blah, blah, blah. Josh Kelly? Yes. He's the one I've been debating with Lockie Neal. Yeah, scored Um, well when he played last year. Yeah, and you would argue the same thing I just argued with Fife. Kelly hasn't got his boy right very often. Very, I'm locking and loading Cribs. He's one critical. of my absolute favourites. Yep. You know how much I love him. Mm. Clayton Oliver, also one yeah, of Shorty's absolute favourites. Yeah, he'll bounce back, favorites. I reckon, big I, time I this year. I just can smell a little 112 plus. Wow. Yeah. He, and he was the poster boy for Melbourne's woes last year too. Mm. Particularly he, early. He came good. Yeah, and he, he wasn't bad. No. And we even use the anecdote of Chook. Trading him out after oh, he scored, he, he scored like one twenty and seventy five, and Chuck was like, "No, nah, I'm I'm out of here. I'm getting rid of him." And he scored like one fifty. <laughs> he scored that game in Geelong where he scored yeah. like one seventy. Yeah, he just yeah. had like eighty million touches. He and just... Chuck was like, "No, nah, he's out." And yeah. we we're like, "Chuck, you can't trade him out." <laughs> oh, that was funny. And then he kept like scoring like one fifty the whole year, and we just be like, Chuck "Oh, Chuck, just, yeah." yeah. Took a took a long drive after that <laughs> oh, game just to oh, set him <laughs> um, What else was? Oh, I keep pulling my back, but um, what else is in your midfield? Uh, you? Stephen Cornelio as well. Captain Cornelio to you? Well, yes. Of the Great Western Sydney Giants. Yeah, I think he could be one of those blokes who really benefits from being captain. Yeah, he's a leader. Some players, you know, it doesn't really change much, but you do see some stats where they increase their performance mm. and. It might only be by a few points, but I think he'll really improve. And obviously, his price a little bit unders because he, he had that injured. zero. Yeah. 
and um, I think I think he averaged about 100 or 101 last year overall. But if you take out that he scored zero, and it's take out what about the 200 he scored or 220 or something? Yeah, that was good. That was the week <laughs> was after that the I week traded him. Brought him in. <laughs> Is that, did you I was very fortunate. Yeah, it was good. Wasn't very it? fortunate. Yeah, Trading him in. Jeez. Scored 206, I think it was. Yeah, Great stuff. So much. Um, moving on to the rucks, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ev- everyone obviously has got Grundy. Gorn was out of my side. Mm. And then I saw footage yesterday of him running laps. Don't pick him, mate. Don't pick Gorn. Nah. Controversial scenes here, ladies and gentlemen. Daniel has opted not to go with the second best ruckman of the last decade. <sighs> Give it a break, mate. Wow. Gee, that was. Close. That was really yeah. close, yeah. I did put, um, I was going to call him Robin Marshall, Rowan Marshall in. No, um, I not do that either. But there's not, like, I can't trust Dolly. Didn't feel right putting Marshall in. I'd be crazy to put um, that blonde kid from the Bulldogs in. Um, oh, Timmy boy! Oh, have you, have you got English, have you? Big fan, mate. Wow. Big that's, fan. Um, that's almost as bad an idea as a shorty Patreon, but... Um, <laughs> He just pulls a Patreon gun. Bang! <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for coming on the podcast, prick. Come on. Fucking asshole. Thanks. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. Just, you can just cut that out. Just cut no, it. I won't just cut edit that. it. I won't. I won't edit anything out of this. 100% real and raw, people. Yeah, very raw. <laughs> that hit me right in the feels. But, um... Tim English? Tim English. <laughs> as I pull myself together. I'm a big fan of him. I'll tell you how I got there. I I started Gorn and Grundy. Yeah, I did. First team I picked, had it. I just didn't like how it looked. I like to have five mids premium style. I do. I just feel a bit bare when we've got eight spots and only half of them are premium types. A good, yeah. So I, you know, juggled around with a mid price type and. And the talk is that English isn't just flying. He's he's looking really good. Yeah, you know, he's maturing. He's everyone's body, flying, yeah. but I remember when Hawkins was about to explode. And it, there's just a different sort of talk. Mm. And it it sounds silly, but you, you can just pick up. He's about to take a step. The question is, is that an increase by six points, <clears throat> 16 points? Is he going to take a massive leap, you know? Well, I'm, I'm a fir- I think I've mentioned it before, but I'm a firm believer of the Bulldogs as a team yeah, coming yeah. back big. They're gonna, yeah. Obviously, they won the Premiership. Mm. They were poor after that. So their trajectory is right, but they had a big dip mm. and they're starting to come back. So I reckon yeah. they'll be back. They've matured. They've got Bont. They've got McRae. They've got Josh. Indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> they've got in- <laughs> <laughs> that burp was sponsored by Boss Burgers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, surely I'll be there in 10 just uh, smashing three Boss Burgers. Then we'll get straight to the pod. Um, Josh, you are, Dunkley. He's yeah. just prime as well. And yeah, they've got some good forwards and some good backs. So mm. I reckon they'll be um, back in, in town. Yeah. And the Rucks are very important position. <laughs> Have you been drinking my <laughs> position? <laughs> I've just had enough water. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm like a big fan. Obviously, he's he's the number one guy on my side that <clears> I need a bit of convincing. You know, he needs to come out and show some really good stuff in the Marsh Community Series or whatever they want to call it. But um, I've been a little facetious. Of course, you can I start can understa- one, but I can understand a little bit of water. your argument for yeah. English, but I didn't start with Gorn last year and it, and it cost me. I didn't start with Lloyd. Or McRae or Gorn, mm. and I, I was I had ter- a terrible year last yeah. year. I'm sorry, yeah. so I'm playing it safe this year. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair, and I mean for Gorn owners, you'd rather him cop a little injury like this in yeah. early Feb yeah. or whatever it was than early April. And it, it could have been bad. He said he was yeah. like looking to get to go and see. Like really, he thought it was a knee. Really, yeah, wow. So. But he's back running. So, so you can look at it two different ways. You could go, well, he's yeah, he's injury prone, but he's got that out of the way. He'll be fit, cool. By round four, he'll be absolutely fine. Mm. Or you could look at it go, pre-season not perfect. The sort of guy who needs a good pre-season, is this going to be a season that where he's just never right at his best? Well, that first season, he really hit his straps when he said, like, I'll be the number one ruckman. Mm. Um, he didn't 
like he was still no one and he mm. had that year for nothing. So I, I'd back him in. He's had yeah. a good couple of years. He's, yeah. he's fit. He's strong. He's got a beard. He's masculine. Yeah, wow. You're getting me all sorts of excited. The, uh, the Grundy Gorn battle over the years has been good. Mm. It's almost Federer, Djokovic, yeah. Federer, Nadal esque. Yeah. Yep. They are the two heavyweights. Not just in the ruck, but in the whole Supercoach game. Yeah, they are. They're one and two. Mm. Dominant, know, really. Yeah. Um, um, moving on to the forward line. Yeah, take a sermon. There's two names which we don't even have to discuss Whitfield yeah. and Martin. Put him in there. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. Same with Grundy. For put God's him in. sake. Yeah. I don't know how Grundy doesn't have 100% ownership. I always wonder that. How do you not have Grundy? Yeah. Anyway, how do you not have Sam Simpson in your midfield? <laughs> um, I've gone with Devin Smith. Or Dylan Smith, as John Ralph calls him in that old son, um, <laughs> as my third forward with expectation of waiting to see something mm. from uh, the JLT Marsh Cup. Um, I flirted with Hugh Greenwood, couldn't afford him. I flirted with a more premium uh, DLF3. Yeah. I've had nightmares about Sam Menegola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm um, going to pick Menegola over Kim Kelly. Thank you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> his trajectory was right. They just bloody got Ablett back. Huh? Ablett's just taking his spot. Hi, my name's Sam Menegola. I got <laughs> traded here to play a specific role. Oh, can you just trade bloody Gary Ablett, the best player ever? Yeah. Can he play in my position? Yeah, he's like, hey, Sam. See you on the half or flank, mate. Yeah. Cheers. See you on the bench because you've been injured all year as well. Yeah. Probably because you hurt your foot from that. Was, that was that's a nightmare one. <clears throat> that, that, you know, we talk about some of my Salem's and Caddies, and there's been some yeah, trading that was out Crips back in the it, day. Menegola actually it, he killed my season. He yeah. did because I had killed to, part of your soul. He did, and my season. Yeah, he, I had to get rid of him in like the third round or something. Yeah, and I held on to him, and I yeah, anyway. and if you. Let's not harp on it, but if you bugger up premium selections and have to trade out sideways, it screws your whole season. Because at the start of the year, you want to be like just raking in the cash, cash cow this, cash cow that, upgrade. If you've got to worry about a couple of premiums, it just shoots you in the foot. But yeah, yeah you're right. Whitfield, Martin, lock them in, load that. I think the F3 is really interesting because most people will probably have, you know, the likes of Cockatoo, Rankin, and Hill. There's a bit of depth going on forward. in the forward line with yep. the rookies, at least at the moment. It seems that way. And I do feel like that F3, and, and some people fighting that F4, there's mid-price opportunity because I've harped on it all the <laughs> pre-season, Jake. There isn't a stack of confidence. <laughs> Jake. <laughs> you catch Jake. There is not much confidence in some of these premiums up forward. No. 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 So you you got to find some love elsewhere. And I think it makes it a bit easier to become a premium when there isn't a stack of other options because you might only have to average 93 or 94 yeah. to, be, to be holdable. It would know? have been moist if Dangerfield was still a yeah. DPP. I don't know if that's a correct word to use, but yeah. um, imagine having a dusty danger Whitfield three-way combo. Yeah, that would have just been a three-pronged Most of my attack. dreams <laughs> yeah. live like that. It's, um, yeah. Yes, that is moist. Um, F... Four for me is Aiden Bonar from yeah, well, the North Melbourne Football Club, and he had some very endearing comments from his, his coach. The pronunciation is Bonar. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he'll be a, a throbbing, powerful force for North Melbourne this yeah. year. He's a right big... alongside that threesome you just mentioned. <clears throat> I was talking about the forwards. The forwards. Um. Yeah, he's a big young lad, and he's priced at two hundred two as a forward mid, so he gives you some flexibility. Mm. Um, Always good to have flexibility. Flexibility. So, yeah, he's, he's my F4. And then, obviously, I've got Nakai Cockatoo, who I also think will explode now that his body seems to be okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I think there's opportunity at North Melbourne for him to get a spot. And, and he's a fellow that, again, if he has some good pre-season games, would definitely be in consideration because he's mm. pretty damn cheap. He's dying for that opportunity, and he didn't get a chance, really. He didn't get much of a look in at the Giants. No, he, but, he had injury, I believe, yeah. as well. I mean, physically, he it's looks like he's he ready looks, to go. He looks good in blue and white. I haven't really seen him play a stack of you, to be honest, other than some highlights. Mm. Um, <laughs> did you see the... Water. Um, 
champions while we're on North Melbourne. Did you see the champion data rankings today for... Don't make me spit my water out, mate. Of course I did. Did you know North Melbourne have the, the second best midfield, I believe? Is that it's correct? The biggest load of shit I've ever heard. And is the Giants correct? is second? sixth. Is that yeah. right? And, so we're and, talking Cornelio, Kelly, Whitfield, Taranto, Hopper versus Ben Cunnington and Sean Higgins. Well, I guess, I mean, Jarek Pollock's there and Aaron Hall's there. Oh. And Jai Simpkin and Trent Dumont is rated elite too, so... <clears throat> um, and do you know Geelong's got the 16th best defence? Oh, I didn't realise we... Anyway, we won't go into that, Daniel. But yeah, I just know, a, little, a little fun fact to end on to cheer you up. There. So, um, fun there. Yeah. Hugh Greenwood, just let me touch on him. You can touch him wherever you want. <laughs> I might well do that. <laughs> Big fan. Big yeah. fan. If, if you watch the channel for five minutes, you'll realise that. I have done a player profile. I've talked him up I watch that. all pre-season. And the the maths is there. He's played such and such at Adelaide. Mm. He's worth such and such. And he's going to play a certain amount of games at Gold Coast. It's, yeah. you, put, you put him in and he... Unless he gets injured yeah. or scores sixty, which you can't you can't see him doing that. You'd be getting seventy fives minimum for a game. Minimum. I genuinely feel like he is one of the not best contested players in the competition, but his yeah, he's contestability good. Good. is elite. Yep. Kick goals. His hands okay, he's not the greatest kick or whatever, but I can easily see him having early 20 touches, sometimes mid, 12 of those contested, sometimes 15, sometimes 10, clearance numbers big. If he gets that opportunity through the preseason games, Gold Coast playing him in there, high centre bounce attendance, I'm locking him and I'm throwing away the key. Yep. So Just like we did the other night, mate. Well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is not going to be rated podcast. In, no, no, it's got a little rowdy at uh, 10 o'clock at night. But no, in all seriousness, I don't think it's a major jump to get to what would be a keeper status. Mm. Like I said, he averages about 86. He doesn't even really need to find 10 extra points. We could settle for seven yeah. if you really wanted that. and You mm. could settle for six. You could hold him long enough. And if he's, you know, if, if you have the luxury to upgrade him later, cool. Yeah. But the forward line doesn't look like it's batting deep. He's probably similar to a like Libba was at that price yeah. last year. Yeah, year before. I reckon Libba was closer to about three hundred. Yeah, but similar sort but, of like you've, yeah. you've got guaranteed scoring potential. Yeah, the price is too much to miss. Yeah, and they're getting games, and it was really only dependent on injury. So um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, well, that's pretty well summed up, mate. And uh, thanks. Yeah. Well. Look, how long have we been going here? I reckon we've uh, covered it off pretty nicely. How's your back? You alright there? Yeah, I've just heard it. Yeah. <laughs> just turning around to your Was it actually that couple of minutes before we started? Yeah, yeah. it was. It yeah. just went, it just went yeah. ping. Yeah. Like my phone's yeah. knee. <laughs> um, no, but I'm keen for the season to start. and um, Yeah. Absolutely, mate. And, uh, see ya. Oh, my God. The coach draft. Here's what yeah, we're playing. The draft right. trophy. Well, let's not add. Sorry, Schmiff, I haven't. Um, Got your name engraved yet. Probably times are tough in the Shorty household. <laughs> yeah. Can't quite find the coin for that. Yeah, but... Times are procrastinating in the Shorty household um, too. So. But no, good to have you back on, mate, because Thank it has you. been a while. Um, we will probably have a couple more of these, I certainly hope. Yeah, we'll have to do some recaps of the, yeah, the, the pre-season, pre-season games. Yeah, and the State of Origin, potentially. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, we'll, we'll be going to that. The yes, we'll be taking the, the train up. Yeah. How's that train going, Tyson? Yeah. <laughs> Awkward yeah. moment when you invite all your mates to go to the state of origin and one already works in Melbourne. So you think he's just going to take the train back, but he cracks it and makes you all catch the train back. So <laughs> yeah, we'll just spend $30 on the mic and put some oh. coin on it. So anyway. God, I hope he watches this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if he survives the coronavirus yeah. from the... <laughs> Currently on a cruise right now. <laughs> he won't come back. He'll come back in a body bag. <laughs> in one of those vacuum sealed bags. Oh. It'd just be like a green puddle oh, in a bag. I can't believe Shorty oh. Super Coach podcast is... <laughs> I with... told you, mate, you've got to bring the appropriate content and make the 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 viewers happy. Make them laugh. Yeah, well... Wow. you get the yeah. likes. Please leak. Leak. Yeah. leak. 
Please leave Man, it's bringing a humor like. and grammar to the channel. <laughs> oh my god. Please leave a like and subscribe for Daniel here, who does a lot of hard work for everyone. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, but now we'll be back soon. <laughs> and I'll chat to you later. Thanks. Cheers.